And I'm now after what seems like an eternity, finally ready to start sticking down the first level of the superstructure. So that would be this part in step 23. I've already assembled it and mostly painted it. I just need to paint these winch-like looking things on the deck. There are also a few photo etch parts that I need to stick to it. It's mostly these cable spools. All these orange blocks are where I need to stick one of those down. There are nine of them. Some staircases, just four of them. Some of these structures to hold boats and then handrails. But I'm not going to do the handrails at this time because I think they're just going to get in the way when I put on the second level. So what I will do is I'll make the cable spools, the stairs, the boat holders, paint them and stick them onto to this first level. And then I'll take this piece and glue it onto the main deck. The cable spools themselves is just a piece of photo etch that I need to fold and then put a piece of plastic tube in the center to wind the cable onto. The plastic center that I'll use is this, just to me a two millimeter plastic tubing. And I cut it to length using a piece of the kit as a guide. Cutting this tube is quite simple. Take your knife, place it at the point where you want to cut, roll the tube with the blade on it to score a line on the outside edge of the tube, and then take some pliers and snap it off. After doing that eight times, because I already constructed one of them, I now have the inner cores that I need. This is one of the more tedious tasks when building a ship. The most tedious is usually building the anti-aircraft guns. Next step would be what you expect. Take some extra thick super glue and stick the core of the spool into the frame. This is actually quite a tricky process, but what I find to be the best way to go about it is to stick down one end first, let it dry off, and then do the other end. So the next step for those cable spools is to paint them, but I don't want to do that until I can paint everything in one go. So next I need to cut off the stairs and that would be H4. I need four H4s. There are my H4s. For parts like this which have a long and thin delicate edge, I'll use the photo etch folding tool. I need to fold such that the detail is on the outside doesn't seem to have a direction. So I can fold it out of the way. These are very thin stairs. These staircases are abnormally thin. Normally they're a bit more chunky than this. These ones seem particularly delicate. It's gonna be more difficult than usual to handle them. Once you've got them like that, need to push out the actual steps themselves. I don't know if you can see that. Not even sure I can see that. Okay, so that's the stairs. Here, okay, the next bit to cut off is on the D sprue, D photo edge sprue. These structures that hold the boat up. So this is a bit awkward. Here we're looking for D16 and 21. D16, D16 is not that, and 21 is not that either. They've mislabeled the sprue in the documentation. It's I. It's, looks like it's supposed to be I16 and I21. Yeah, so it's not D, it's I, and those pieces need to be folded. So we're taking I16 and I21. They are gonna be four of each. So there are four there and four there. It's all of these pieces need to be used. To stick these parts together, I'll use extra thin super glue. If you try and glue pieces like this together by placing glue on the surfaces, you'll probably make a mess of it. Glue will come squirting out the sides. The gap might be a bit too thick. It will probably not look right. But if you use extra thin super glue, and let capillary action draw this very thin glue between the pieces while you hold them together, you'll get a good bond and no excess glue seeping out of it. 
bonds basically instantly. All the parts have now been prepared and they're ready for painting. I'm going to paint everything in the light grey colour and then a few of these parts need to be painted in the dark grey and I'll come back in a second pass and do them. I've also masked up level one of the superstructure, painted these little barrels in gunmetal and everything else is going to be sprayed in the colour of the camouflage. That looks pretty good to me. And now to spray these little bits and pieces. These parts need to dry for a moment so that I can hand them and flip them over to paint the underneath. I think the easiest way to do this is hold them and paint them one at a time. I made a small mistake here. I should have taken note of which colors to paint these parts before I put on masking tape. Now that the tape is off, I just need to figure out which of these boat holders is which. I can tell them apart by looking at these holes. These ones have holes below the notch and these ones have holes pretty much in line with the bottom of that notch. And these ones look to have a sharper curve compared to these ones. So these will go at the end and those will go in the middle. So from this side, I need two centers and one end. And on this side, I need one end. And then the other three remain light gray. As for these, that one is going to be dark. On this side, this one will be light. Come to this place over here, that one will be light. This one will be light as well. Down to the sides of the ships. In front of the funnel will be dark. In front of the funnel on this side will also be dark. Over there it will be light. And over here will be dark. Okay. These are the bits that need to be painted in the dark gray. Before I start gluing, I want to wind the wire onto these spools. That's going to be a bit of a tedious process with none of them to do. I'm going to use lead wire. This wire has a diameter of 0.4 millimeters. First step in this process is to glue the wire to the bottom of the barrel. I'm just using a little bit of super glue to do that. Once you've got that one end attached, it's just a matter of taking the time to neatly work it around the barrel. Lead is very malleable, but it will also snap very easily. So you do have to be careful about not pulling too hard. This wire is a little bit thick for the scale, but if I were to go with an in-scale wire, this would be a considerably more difficult and tedious process. So I'm kind of splitting the difference here. I want to put on a wire that will have a good effect, but not be overly time consuming to place. In the past I've used thread to do this, but it always seems to get frayed and messy. So that's why I'm trying out these um, lead wires. Once the wire is on, I'll paint it in the light brown color that it's supposed to be. It's actually working out really nicely. The way the wire just stays exactly where you place it is very convenient. With thread, it'll always be trying to unspool. It's very nice that wherever I place it, it stays. It doesn't keep on trying to spring out. It makes this a lot easier. One down, eight to go. All nine cable spools have now been prepared and they're ready for painting. As far as I can tell, they need to be painted in a light brown. So I'm going to be using this desert yellow again. I think it's going to be easiest to brush paint these. Just a matter of taking it slowly and building up the paint layer by layer. The time has finally come. I shall now stick down some parts. I'm going to use a super glue applicator to glue down the boat holders. You can see when I place it, on the deck and let capillary action pull the glue underneath the part it leaves a bit of a puddle. You don't need to worry too much about that because when you spray over this with a matte coat it'll hide that glossy puddle and it'll be unnoticeable. Another convenient applicator for especially delicate parts is a piece of wire and a pin vise. Yeah, you can use that to pick up glue and just tap it onto the edge of the photo edge that you want to glue down. Once again, capillary action will pull the glue underneath the part and glue it in place. You just have to be very careful the first time you tap down the glue. Almost don't let it touch, but let the little drop of glue make contact with the photo etch and get sucked underneath it. Once you've got that first drop down, 
part will be tacked in place. And then you can pick up more glue with a piece of wire and stroke it along the photo etch to give it a good contact. This is probably the cleanest way that you can apply photo etch and there'll be very little excess glue left on the part. Now that all these parts are glued in place, I will spray it in gloss coat so I can add on some panel line. As before, I'll be using Tamiya X22 clear gloss varnish. This will protect any enamel paints from the wash and it will create a smooth surface that the panel line can easily flow across. That is nice and glossy. Now it needs to dry for a day and then I can apply the panel line. This part is now sufficiently dry and it is ready for the panel line. This is the first time I am applying panel line while I'm building the ship. In the past I always did it after the ship was completed. I think as you can see from what I'm doing now, that was difficult to get into all the places you would want it. I'm not sure if this is going to be a better method for doing this, but I think it's worth trying. I won't spray it in matte paint once I've completed this. I'll leave it with this gloss coat. So what I'll do in, in the future is as I build up layers, I'll glue it on in the same state that I'll leave this piece in. And then at the end, on the joins between these pieces, I'll then do a little bit of pattern liner to blend them together. And then after that, seal everything in in one go. So that is sufficiently dirtied up. And now to remove the majority of it with some mineral turpentine. Over here, I want to clear out most of it. I'm doing that by sweeping sideways. But then to finish it, I'm going to go streaks down to make any residue that does streak, streak towards the deck to make it look like uh, watermarks. I want to flood this area and let it just work itself out. Let that evaporate off and see where the panel line ends up. I want to tone down and lighten these spools a little bit. Add some light gray in here, see what that does. If this doesn't work, I can always just come back with a brown or darker color or use turpentine to completely remove it. I didn't want to use brown because that would darken it further. I want it to look like that light brown rope that has a little bit of white in it. So I think this could be a good uh, way to go. So this part is now complete. I think the panel line has done a good job of bringing out the details. Quite like how it looks. I think it's ready to be stuck to the actual ship. This piece just fits neatly on over here. It shouldn't go in with any difficulty. It seems to want to naturally grip quite well. I'm going to glue this using Revell Contact Pro. I am forever blocking the spout on those glue bottles, those Revell glue bottles. I've resorted to just decanting it. I should actually get some Tamiya glue that has a, a brush for this kind of thing. I'm just going to place it on the edge, try not to go over too far. That should be sufficient. I don't see glue squirting out and going all over the place. So as long as I've made good contact along the edge, this should work out quite nicely. Just need to leave it now for a while to settle down the glue to dry. I don't want to handle it too much until that has happened. Once this has been given a chance to dry, I will install the stairways going from the main deck to the first level deck. Of these four staircases, only one straddles a line between the dark and light paint. So I just need to sort out this one. I think I'll just use a piece of masking tape to indicate the line and then brush paint it in the dark color. The paint lines up quite well. So now I'm gonna glue it down with some super glue. When working with Photo Etch, if you can find a way to position the part to where you want it to be without applying glue and then hold it there and then use some kind of applicator to put the glue in place. It's almost always a lot easier than placing the glue first. With a wire like this where I'm picking up so little each time, sometimes I don't pick up enough glue to actually place it down. You have to come back a number of times until you get it right. But if it's just sitting there loose and dry, it doesn't matter. There's, there's no harm. It doesn't matter how many times you have to touch a piece of wire to it before it actually sticks. As long as you're only putting on minimal glue, you'll never get to the point where you have a horrible excess that you need to try and remove. And you'll never have to worry about positioning it perfectly the first time. You have all the time in the world to position it to where you want it and then apply the glue. And with the installation of the fourth staircase, we come to the end of this video. In the next video, I'll continue working on the superstructure. I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Cheers.